So let's have a quick little chat about dehydration and the differences between you dehydrating your vegetables, possibly some of your fruits, and even maybe some meats, and the difference between buying canned goods at the store. Now, yes, you buy the canned goods and a lot of everything has already been done for you, right? I mean, it's so basic, so easy. You know, there you go. If you got a good shelf life, it's good for two years. And then how long are you willing to let it go past that date before you won't eat it again? Now, we all know that if you store them in a nice, cool, dry place and everything stays fine with the cans and they don't bulge, no rusting, you open it up, smells good, you take the taste test. As I've talked about in some of my videos, you got to take the leap of faith, people. So this way here, you know if the product is good or not. But how far are you willing to let it go? That's the question. So you talk about dehydration. Yes, you have to go out and you have to buy a dehydrator. They do range in all different prices and sizes. You can get some big ones, small ones, middle-sized, whatever. And the same with the prices. You can spend a little bit or a lot. It just depends on your budget and what you're comfortable doing. So you take your dehydrator. I would suggest using frozen vegetables. We're gonna talk about vegetables. So you use frozen vegetables. Why? Because they've already took one step out of the process for you. They've already been blanched and then flash frozen. So you can take them right from the freezer, right onto your trays and your dehydrator and dehydrate whichever kind of vegetables you would like to do. One step has been done. There you go. Okay, so you dehydrate your vegetables and then you take and you have to get yourself canning jars. You wanna store them in canning jars. So you take and you Fill your canning jar full of peas, carrots, whatever it may be, okay? You have to buy some oxygen absorbers. So yes, there's another little bit of expense, but you put that on there, seal that lid tight. If you had a vacuum sealer, I would vacuum seal the lid after I put the oxygen absorber in it. Vacuum seal it. Put it in a cool, dark place for extended life of your product so no light gets to it and that can of, let's say, peas, or jar, I should say, will last, at the minimum, 10 years. They say they can last longer if it is a dark place where there's no light. So if you can come up with some place where you can store that, in a cool place, and it is dark with no light, you probably could push that for 15 years to have fresh vegetables at your disposal whenever you need it. So you have to fork out a little bit of money for the dehydrator. Yeah, well, you know, maybe it's coming down to that because if you haven't noticed, some of the frozen vegetables are actually cheaper per pound or weight than what you're getting in the cans because you have to remember in the cans, most of the time you have to add in liquid. So you have the liquid that is in with the product, which takes up space in the can. This way here, you're not getting as much product as you would if you bought frozen vegetables where there is nothing, no liquid involved because they were blanched in hot water, then flash frozen. So they're ready to go and very easy to do. And you can storm in a cool, dark, place in your house in those canning jars and you my friends will have vegetables fruits possibly but we're just talking vegetables right now for a very very long time in your pantry for you and your family in an emergency and survival type situation i'm survival preparedness for beginners this is a survival tip that you may want to check into and look for more videos on dehydration because I'm going to get my dehydrator going again and I'm going to start documenting stuff and show you all how it's done. So until next time, catch you all on the flip side.